what non-traditional means is you had like a long delay to get into your secondary school. So basically what I had to do, because my grades were so bad, I had to first... Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I know it's been super duper long, but I'm back. So today's video, I have wing stuff. I'm really hungry, so I'm gonna pull out everything right now. I went a little healthy, and instead of getting fries, I got the veggie sticks. I also got some, ooh, I got some Cajun corn. This looks pretty good. I got the chicken. So I pretty much got all bone in, and then I got the lemon pepper, because lemon pepper is super good. It's like the best thing. And then I also got the Cajun one. And basically, the Cajun has the buffalo sauce, and then it has some of the Cajun seasoning on top. I had to go get some paper towels. I got some ranch. I didn't know that the ranch was so big. Oh my goodness. And I got some cheese sauce. Okay, I think I'm going to dig in. And I also got Diet Coke right here. Okay, I'm going to dig in on this. Mmm. Wingstop has the best ranch. Mmm. Cheese sauce? Super good. Mm, okay. So for today's video, I want to do something a little bit different. If you're new to my channel, my name is Jody. I just moved to Utah. I'm starting dental school. And for this video, I wanted to talk about how I got into dental school as a non-traditional student. Pretty much, I graduated from undergrad in 2014, and then I started dental school this year, which is 2020, so that gave me six years of just like a big gap. And I just kinda wanna talk about like things that I had to do. So pretty much, right off the bat, during my undergrad, I was very involved, so I did a lot of extracurriculars, I did a lot of internships, I did a lot of shadowing. Mm. I joined a community service-based sorority group. I was very, very involved, but the only thing was my grades were really bad. I'll make a video about like my grades and everything during UC Davis. That was the school I went to for undergrad. I'll make a separate video for that because that's a whole nother long thing, and I can kind of just talk about like Things I did that were that didn't work for me and things I did that did work for me. After I graduated Davis, I knew that I needed to take extra classes because I had a lot of like C's. I had like two C minuses or something and I knew I had to retake those classes. So basically as soon as I graduated Davis, I just started enrolling myself into extension courses so basically I, I took a bunch of classes at uc davis extension which is the same courses as the undergrad but it's like through the extension system which means that the grades that you get it's going to be separate it's going to be in the extension grades if that makes sense so pretty much in my mind after i graduate davis i just needed to retake all of those courses, get a better grade, boost my GPA, and apply to dental schools again. So that's what I did the first time. I took the classes that I didn't do as well for a whole year, then I applied. But the thing was my GPA was so low that it barely boosted up, and I felt like that one year of classes was not enough to prove to dental schools that I can actually handle it, because if you look at my track record throughout the four years at UC Davis, it was just not good. And it's like, how is just one year of classes gonna make up for those four years? You know what I mean? So 
I, I just kept on like, so basically after that one year um, of taking classes, for the first year I, I did it really easy. I think I only took like four classes total in one year. And that obviously is not enough. And at the same time I was volunteering, I did the DAT again, and I was getting involved. I was working a lot. I was working a bunch of restaurant jobs because I'm financially independent from my parents, so I had to pay for all that stuff. So yeah, that obviously didn't work out. And then what ended up happening was I had to take more classes at a time. So basically, you can't just take like one or two classes and then like, you know, get good grades and then hopefully like get into dental school because you need a lot more to prove for it. It's obviously, it depends case by case, but for my case, since I had so many bad grades, I needed a lot more to prove it. Instead of taking just like one to two classes at a time, what I ended up doing, I started boosting up to three to four classes at a time. I had a six year gap, right? So I think the first year I took a couple classes and then I had taken the DAT. And then after that first year, I kind of just kind of like got into my work mode. And I think the second year, out of undergrad I just worked and just kind of like chilled I think I was working at a dental office um, as a dental assistant and then I was working at a restaurant job I also the second year I um, was able to go to Taiwan and like visit like my mom who was living in Taiwan at the time and just kind of like kind of like figure out what I wanted to do and kind of just like chilled for a little bit I was working at a restaurant job which made enough money to support myself and then I was also working at a dental office too, so which was really good. So basically after that second year of just working and saving money and stuff, the third year, I think that's when I went full throttle. Like I think I was taking three classes at a time at UC Davis Extension, and which made it look like it was like a full course load for every quarter. And I think I did that for a whole year and I was able to get really good grades. And I think my problem was when I was at Davis, I'll go more into it with another video, but my problem was at Davis was I never gave myself like that time where I took like one to two science classes at a time. I just went ahead and took like three to four science classes like right off the bat and that really screwed me up because I feel like when I came to Davis, I didn't have a strong foundation yet. So what was nice about extension was I took like one to two classes in the beginning, right? So I can kind of like build my foundation and get like good grades and then after that was up, I started taking like two to three classes to four classes at a time and then that kind of like helped me kind of build up to that level i was also just more focused because i knew like this was my last shot so i took a full year of just like i already retaken all the science classes that i didn't do well in and then at this point i'm just taking like random like um, upper division science classes that sounded really interesting to me and i ended up getting like pretty good grades and I think what I ended up doing was I applied to dental schools and I still didn't get in. I didn't get any interviews. And then I started looking into master's program. And then there was one at UCSF that I was really interested in. It was a global medicine master's program. But the deadline was literally the week after I found out about it. And at that point, like, I just knew I wasn't going to apply because you have to write, like, a personal statement. You have to get letters of rec and things like that. But then I also found another one, which was at USC. And then that one had... Um, the same, it was the Global Medicine Master's Program, Master of Science, so I went ahead and like applied for that one because the deadline for that one was a little bit later. But um, yeah. So basically what I had to do, because my grades were so bad, I had to first retake all of the classes I got a bad grade in. Did that first. After that, 
I started upping my just science courses because that was my weak spot. My, my science GPA was very low. So I just started taking like extra upper division science classes. The risk of that is you have to do well in those classes because if you don't, it just looks really bad. And on top of that, you're spending a lot of money on it. Like I had to use my credit card and stuff and like you're just you're spending a lot of money on these courses. So you have to like give it your all. And then, depending on how low your GPA is, some people can just do like a year of extension courses and apply to dental schools and get in because their GPA is not that low. But for my case, I needed to take all of those classes, like a full year of just extra classes so I can get into a master's program. And that master's program is what got me into dental school because I feel like dental schools look at that master's program and see that, oh, you were able to follow this program throughout, you were able to complete it. Um, and for me, it's like I got letters of recommendations through our master's program too. So it's like I was able to go to a new program, do well in those classes, finish the program, and build relationships with my professors and I'm able to get letters of recommendation at a new school. So, and at the same time, you have to be involved. Like I, I joined a couple of clubs and things like that. And then that master's program was able to get me four interviews. I had one interview before December, which is pretty exciting. And I actually got into dental school on December 3rd, which is like, you know, the day after decision day or whatever. So that's really good. And then I had three more interview invitations, but I only went to one more. Because at that point, like I already got into the dental school that I'm, going, I'm at right now. And then the second and third invitation, I kind of knew that I wouldn't go if I had gotten in because I'd choose the school that I'm in, that I am in now because I, already, I had already gotten my acceptance to this school. And then my fourth interview was in California and obviously I wanted to be close to home and stuff, but I got waitlisted to that school. Love and pepper is so good. So that was my journey um, as a non-traditional student. And basically what non-traditional means is um, there's like a lot of different definitions, but I think a good way to put it is that you had like a long delay to get into your secondary school. And that could be for a lot of reasons, like maybe you started a family, maybe you weren't ready like I was not ready. Um, maybe you would need it to work because you couldn't afford it, just like, you know, things like that. But I feel like nowadays the non-traditional route is the more traditional route because a lot of people start school later now. Like a lot of people are realizing that school is actually really awesome and really good way to boost up your job position, things like that. During that six years, a lot of work a lot of like not knowing what the hell I was doing, 
not knowing if I was actually going to end up in dental school. So, yeah. If you're somebody who's trying to get into dental school and you've been graduated and out of school, like, you can totally still get back into it. You just have to, you know, start taking classes, and that's a good way to do it. And when you start taking classes, like, you can start building relationships with your professors. Luckily for me, in one of my science classes, um, it was an epigenetic science course, and I um, developed a really good relationship with my professor, and she was looking for lab volunteers, and I got into contact with her and had a meeting with her, and she allowed me to work in her lab. Lab research experience on your resume or CV, and just like having that work experience, you know, working with people who are researchers and things like that. So, yeah, if you're trying to go to dental school after you graduated college, I think the first step is to just really get help and talk to a counselor, start taking science classes, um, look into a post-bac program. I know a lot of people did post-bac programs. For me, I just thought a post-bac program was a very similar to a, you know, just taking classes through extension. So that's what I did. I just took a bunch of classes through extension and just kind of made it into my own post-bac program. And then after that, you know, during that time, I was able to build good relationships with my professors. I got new letters of recommendation, like updated letters of recommendation. I worked at a dental office. I was volunteering and I was able to apply to my master's program and then I got it. And the master's program goes by really fast. Like the one that I did was only one year long. And don't feel so rushed to like get into dental school ASAP because if you're like me who graduated with a really bad GPA, like I was always thinking like I need to get in the next year, I need to get in the next year. Like that's not the way to go. Like if you had four years of really bad grades, you literally need a lot of work. And that's what I needed. I needed those extension courses. I needed to take it one at a time. I needed to slowly move up to three to four times, four classes at a time. And then I needed that master's program. And now that I'm in dental school, like I feel like I can like take on anything. This corn's really good. And the cheese goes really good with that. I'm feeling this corn. Mmm. So good. If you're trying to go to dental school and you're lost and stuff, like feel free to message me. I will help you out. Cause I've been there. There were so many times where I felt like like I'm not going to get in anymore, like, after, like, the second or third year. But you just have to keep doing it, you know? You just have to, like, volunteer and, like, get into volunteering at a dental office and then just kind of see how you react to, like, certain things. If you feel like you're getting really good feedback and people really like you and you're doing a good job being in that setting, then I feel like it's worth a shot to just keep going. Luckily for me, when I was younger, like, I always, like, volunteered and got involved with, like, community service and stuff so when I'm in like a community service setting where I'm like helping people and just kind of working like it's I'm like in my zone so 
that kind of like kept me to keep going because I just liked doing community service and working with people. Lemon pepper is so good. Thank you so much for watching and listening to my story. Let me know what you think. I'll probably do more um, story times and just like my experience with things because I do feel like I'm older and I've been through a lot of stuff or just like some interesting stories and stuff. So I'll, I'll start doing that more often while I eat. But as of now, I am full. And my cat is meowing, so I gotta go. But thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!